שבא אבסלום יושב עליו, אמר, you know, delighted to go into uh, a little light shining bright tonight, because we went into darkness, our people are, a lot of our people are in darkness, they really don't care that they're in darkness. You try to bring them to the light, they don't want to come to the light. And when the most high start visiting this earth in a real way, and it start hitting home, oh, then you're going to wake up. But it's too late then. Because now is your opportunity, you know, to get this. At least try to learn more. Because when you have, if, if, if somebody hand you this Bible, you can't go in this Bible and understand what it's talking about. But you think that when the Mashiach of Shai come back, that he's going to save you and put you in a certain condition of what you would call the kingdom of heaven. And you slapped in trying to know what it is that's been given in these last days. Because ain't nobody bringing it like us. No boasting at all. Humble, humble as could be. But who is it? You know, I've seen uh, uh, somebody say, oh, we're going to read. You have to read tonight. One, what, eight verses? Come on. That's why we don't know anything now. So let's look at this light tonight. We looked at darkness, ignorance, not knowing. Matter of fact, it's uh, it's uh, an insensibility is unappreciative or unappreciable. We'll say that unconscious, numb. Unresponsive or unaffected by feelings of others, unawares, indifferent, not knowing, and dumb and stupid. Darkness. You take all those words and you look into each one and you'll see. That we as a people, the majority of us are in darkness. Fitting those categories of understanding what darkness is. Especially spiritual darkness. It's, it's just something else, you know. So let's look at the light tonight. All right? <laughs> let's let the, let the light shine bright. Look at... Um, Colossians 3.17, as always, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father, by Hashem, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. So figuratively, we're going to look at, um, look at uh, Psalms 27, the 27th chapter, verse 1. All that we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father. We thank the Most High. For this glorious day. This is his day. The Sabbath is his day. So Psalms 27 and 1, speaking of the Most High, it says, The Most High is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You know? If the Most High is our light and our salvation, salvation being powerful from the authority, he said, Whom shall I fear? The Most High is the strength of of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Because a lot of y'all don't equate fear with being afraid or being scared. But fear is to be afraid and to be scared. That's why he said, the most high is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear, right? Whom shall I be afraid of? Whom shall I be scared of? The most high is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Give you the definition of fear. For all you that don't believe fear means to be afraid or be scared. Right there in that one verse. He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, 
They stumbled and fell. That's something, man. The wicked came upon them to eat up his flesh. Don't get it twisted, because they did eat us. The one host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. His mind shall not fear. Our mind shouldn't fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. In what? In the most high. Being his light. Being our light. Being our way to salvation. The strength of our life. The most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Forever and ever and ever and ever. One thing, verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Most High, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Most High all the days of my life, that you may dwell with the Most High all the days of our life. To behold the beauty of the Most High and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, like we in now, Jacob's trouble, Israelites' trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Be hid in the time of troubles. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yeah. I will sing praises unto the Most High. Hear, O Most High, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. That's what we got to pray, y'all. We have a, a nationwide uh, fast on the 15th of this month. We like everybody to participate from evening to evening. Your evening to evening. Inquiring to the Most High, as he said here. I will cry with my voice. For the times that we're in, as the Yasharala. That he may lift, up, lift us, us up on high. And show mercy unto us. It's a great prayer. Go through the whole chapter. Inquiring to the Most High. For our nation. Let's go to Micah. Seven chapter. That's the uh, 15th of this month. From evening to evening. Micah 7 and verse 8. That's what I'm trying to most I have pity on us. So a lot of you are not going to be able to do it because what did I say? What did David say? He cried to the most high. A lot of y'all too prideful. If you're too prideful, you can't you know, be able to do it. But it's okay. Because the most I know. Who's sincere and who's not. Go to Micah 7th chapter. Verse 8. But that's what we have to do. Because the only time he had pity on us was when we did that. The only time. Micah 7th chapter. Verse 8. Rejoice. Not against me. O oh, mine enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. I'm going to get back up. Tell you, a just man falls seven times and rises again. When I sit in darkness, sometimes not knowing, the Most High shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Most High. He never give you more than you can handle. You can bear. So I will bear the indignation of the Most High because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, shining bright. He's going to bring us forth to the light you will see the brightest light ever. And I will, I shall behold his righteousness. You hear that? 
We're going to behold his righteousness. You see? And the only way we're going to behold his righteousness, he's telling us to do what I say to do. What's his righteousness? Y'all should know it by heart now. By now, Deuteronomy 6.25. Deuteronomy 6.25, we're going to behold his righteousness. This is what his righteousness is. And it shall be our righteousness if, that's the condition, y'all, we observe to do all these commandments before the Most High, our power, as he commanded us. See? He gave us commandments. He gave us laws, such of commandments to follow. That's going to be our righteousness. So how are you righteous if you're not doing what did he say do? He took the time to give us these laws, statutes and commandments and judgments. So when you say that you, you don't have to follow him and his work, then you say his work is in vain. Do y'all realize that? When you say you're not under the law, whose laws are they? <coughs> They're the most highs. Proverbs 24 and 17. Proverbs 24 and 17. See, we have, we have disrespected him in so many different ways. And we'll come with an excuse of why you can't disrespect him. Just talk to someone that goes to these uh, secular churches, I like to call them, or had a mind of any type of religion. And you see, they're trying to justify themselves of not doing what it is that we're supposed to do and what we can do. Some things you can do. Some of you, you just think that, oh, the most I can overlook some things that you do that's sin. And he's not going to overlook it. But you think that he's going to overlook it because of the way your mind tells you that is okay to follow your heart. The scriptures say the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The most I know it. And everything's being recorded. That's why we got to get it right. Much as possible. It's amazing to me how people really think that the most I gave us laws, but the ones we can follow, that he gonna overlook what it is that you don't want to do or don't do that you can do, and you see others doing it, but you say, "Oh, I ain't gotta do that." But we can do it. No doubt about it, you can do it because you see somebody doing it, but you don't want to do it, or you don't think 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 it's important. It's gonna be sad. Look at uh, Proverbs 24 and 17. It says, Rejoice not when thine enemy felleth or falleth, like and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. So, if we say our brother, even though he might be an enemy, don't rejoice on that. He said, When thine enemy falleth, and let not a visualize. And let not thine heart, which is your mind, be glad when he stumbleth. Let the Most High see it. That's chastisement of, chastisement of the Most High. I understand the Most High chastise who? The just and the unjust. So who is without chastisement? If you without chastisement, you a bastard, he said. So the Most High get your enemy back. Don't rejoice, he said in it. That's why you got to know what the scriptures say spiritually so you can operate in a right perspective because this world, is, you'll be laughing at it. Oh, yeah, I know it's going to get you. will be so glad that something happened to someone that's an Israelite, that's your enemy. Something happened to him. That's why he's saying, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And let not thine heart or your mind be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the most I see it, you see, everybody can't deal with this. There's going to be a whole lot of people that's, they're going to turn this off. 
You know why? Because they got pride. You can't do this with pride. Because you think you are that. And you ain't nothing as you ought to be. Before the Most High. Understand, understand this. That's why he said, unless the Most High see it. He see you doing that. And it displeased him. And he turned away his wrath from him. He turned his, his wrath away from him. Hmm. And bring it on you. But understand. Verse 16. For a just man. Follow seven times. Seven of the complete number of completion. It rises up again. Just like we read in this previous scripture. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. The wicked going to fall into mischief. And everywhere you go, you got to look at why is it happening to you? The scriptures say when you please the most high, he make even your enemy be at peace with you. Right? So you got to look at pleasing the most high more so that your enemies be at peace with you. Just look at uh, Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3, the third chapter. That's Jeremiah crying out in captivity. Lamentation is crying out. Lamentations 3, 38. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Hmm? Just ask the question. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeded not evil and good? Hmm? Wherefore does a living man complain? Why does a little living man complain? Is asking. A man for the punishment of his sins? You getting chastised for the punishment of your sins? Why are you complaining? Most High said, hey, I'm going to go to my place. Until they acknowledge their offense. He said in their affliction. They shall seek me early. So. Why are you. Complaining. When the most high chastises you for your sin. You praying now. It might be very very much. Hard on you. If you pay later. And the judgment is to throw your butt into the lake of fire. I think it'd be better for us to get this chastisement now and get ourselves right. Because you say who he love it, he chastens to get us right in his eyes to make it to the kingdom. Then to be chastised and thrown into the lake of fire as a judgment. What you say? You make that call. Wherefore does a living man complain? And we can love to complain. Woe is me. Woe is me, people, right? A man for the punishment of his sins? You can punish. Like I said, who the most high lover, he chastens. And no evil is from the most high. See, out of the mouth of the most high come good and evil. We just read that, right? Right? Proceed of not good and evil. Evil and good. The most high brings evil upon those that have done something that's evil, that draws it to them. That's righteous. This is the most high. And when you do good, he brings blessings. When you look at what he says, do his rules and regulations, you start doing it, you start jumping, you get into it, then you start to see the blessings to come. But when you want to do it your way, as you've been programmed in this world to do and follow, then hey, if you don't know what's right, what you gonna do? Something that's wrong. If you don't know what's right, how you gonna do what's right when you don't know what's right? You just gonna do what's wrong. You gonna follow just like they told you to follow your own heart. Follow your own mind. The heart is the mind, the way you think. You gonna follow just the way you think and it's often the most I gonna jack you. But he's long suffering, but he gonna get you. Believe this. As long as I've been in this, I have seen it. I felt it. Feel it right now, as I'm talking. So, don't think he won't. It don't matter where you think you are. 
in this world, no matter how you high you think you are, you can't run from the sky. You can't run from the most high. And he, like I say, he's long suffering, but he's full of mercies and graces. You know? But he's still gonna get us. You know? Ain't no way you're gonna get out of it. Go to Isaiah 60. Let's go to the kingdom. Isaiah 60. But we're dealing with this light. But we got to make sure that you understand this ain't just something that's going to come to you and you're going to have it without work. Being slothful. And you doing whatever you want to do in your world to make your world however you want it to be. And in his world, it's like, well, uh, ain't that much to be shown of how you really, really care about him and doing what he say do. Isaiah, the 60th chapter, and verse 19. He said, The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Hear that? The sun not going to be our light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. You're going to need the sun for brightness by day. You're going to need the moon at night to give her light, to give his light. But the most high shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy power, thy glory. The sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Going to be there all the time. It ain't going to be no sun rising in the east and settling in the west. Hear what it said? The sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the most high shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Hear that? The days of us being sorrowful, being sad, crying, having despair, being discouraged, unhappy, finished. Hey, sound great to me. What about you? Isn't that worth working to get to? Man, that's that's powerful. But that light going to be shining bright. Look at Revelation 21. Revelation 2, last book of the Bible. Matter of fact, only one more chapter after verse tw at chapter 21. Revelation 21 and 23. Uh, it say, in the city, in the kingdom, y'all, and the city had no need of the sun. Neither of the moon. Just what we, what we just read. To shine in it. For the glory of the Most High did lighten it. And the Lamb, who was a Mashiach that was shy, as an angel, as the Spirit of the Most High, is the light thereof. Hear that? So, it, once again, it said the city, you know, as we have... 12 gates going into the city. And each tribe is going into a gate. Three tribes on the north. Three tribes on the south. That's why when somebody talk about spiritual Israelite, no, this is spiritual Israelite. It has nothing to do with this because you got to be an Israelite according to the flesh to go into these gates, Right? Three tribes on the north, three tribes, you add them up. Three tribes on the south, three tribes on the east, and three tribes on the west. That's 12 tribes. Each tribe have a gate to go through, you see? So where are the other nations? Oh, here they are. Verse 24, and the nations of them which are saved, so it's a remnant of the nations going to be saved. 
understand, understand this. Shall walk in the light of it. You hear that? They're going to walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. What do you think that's talking about? Hmm? The kings of the earth are going to bring their glory and honor into it. They're going to be working for we the Israelites. Look. And understand this. By the time you get to Revelation, you should already be knowing all these different scriptures that, that it's talking about that's already been prophesied here in the Old Testament. Look at uh, Isaiah 60 and 11. Isaiah 60 and 11. 60th chapter, 11th verse. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Got 12 gates, right? With each of the names of the 12 tribes of Israel on those gates. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Why? Why these gates not going to be shut day nor night? That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. The remnant of these nations that's going to be saved. And that their kings may be brought. The king's going to be brought. That's what I say. Verse 10. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. They're working for us in the kingdom. As servants and handmaids. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee. For in, thy, in my wrath, in the most high wrath, I smote thee. That thee is talking about the Israelites. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. See? You won't find where the most I have favor on anybody else. Who else? Name a nation. Most I say I have mercy on them. I know Isaiah 14 and 1 says this. For the most I will have mercy, which is not getting something you do deserve. Mind you, on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. That's what we're talking about with them 12 gates in the lands that he's going to put us in, in the kingdom. He's going to set us in our own land. Not no man. Ain't no man going to save you. That's Deuteronomy 28, 29 all day long. It ain't never going to go nowhere. You can read it for yourself. No man shall save thee. But a lot of y'all putting men over the most high of my shack of a shot. Don't even realize it. Understand, overstand this. For the most high will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers, these other nations that we've been reading about, outside of the 12 tribes of Israel, shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to be cleaving to us. This is after everything is destroyed that you see now. And we on the blink of, could be on the blink of World War III right now. But ask somebody. And the people shall take them, these other nations, and bring them to their place where they're going to live. A remnant of these other nations. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Like you possess your clothes. You're going to possess them. In the land of the Most High for servants and handmaids, men service and women service, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. That's the future. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to rule over the oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that in the day that the most I shall give thee rest. That's when we're going to have rest because it ain't time of, our time of rest right now. He's going to give us rest from thy sorrow. Like we've been reading so far, right? From sorrow, no more sadness. And from thy fear, you ain't going to be fearing nothing. You're going to be afraid or scared of nothing. And from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You're going to give us the glory of the kingdom. Look at Revelations. 21. 
and 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. But there shall be no light night there. Hear that? The gates not going to be shut at all by day. But there shall be no night there. It's shining bright all the time. <laughs> and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Just like we just read in Isaiah the 60th chapter. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. You want to sin? You think the sinner's going, like the most I say, uh, he hates the sinner and he hates the sin too. But y'all say the most high hate the sin, but he loved the sinner. He said, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work of abomination or make it for lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the whole uh, perspective of what we should be doing in our life. That our names be written in the Lamb's book of life. We live forever. Let's look at uh, Revelation 22. And verse uh, 5. And there shall be no night there. Again, there shall be no night there, and there will be no darkness either. Ignorance of not knowing. And they need no candle. You're not going to need a candle to light, because you don't need a candle to light But when you're in what? Darkness. And they need no candle, neither. Light of the sun. You hear that? You're going to need no light of the sun. For the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Hear that? They shall reign forever and ever. Yes. And it tells you, uh, a lot of y'all think y'all going to be somewhere up in the sky somewhere. Raining. I don't think so. That's the most highest throne. That's the angels. Look at uh, Revelations 5 and 10. I'll show you what we're going to write. Forever and ever and ever. And has made us unto our power kings and priests. So we're going to be kings and priests. And these, we rehearsing right now. And we shall reign on the earth. Hear that? Say we're going to reign forever and ever and ever. And we shall reign on the earth. Right here. On this earth. Because you say, look. Just for inquiry minds. Go to Isaiah. Sixty-six. The last book of Isaiah. He told us something. Isaiah 66 and 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth that we're going to reign on forever and ever and ever, it said, which I will make, which the most I'm going to make, because he got to purify with fire, first and foremost, which I will make shall remain before me. Then the earth going to remain before the most high. Said the most high, so shall your seed and your name remain. So our children are going to remain and our name going to remain. Okay? So let's look at uh, James, the first chapter. In the 17th verse. James, the first chapter in the 17th verse. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. See? That's part of his character. Father of lights. 
with whom is no verbalness, neither shadow of turning. He says it shall be. See? So, we have to be able to be in the spirit to be able to see and understand. What is he saying? Uh, no variableness. Go to Numbers 23 and 19. Go back to the law when he's talking to us. Introduce himself to us as the Israelites in the wilderness. Giving us his laws, his rules and regulations. Look what he said about himself. Um, Numbers 23 and 19. The Mosiah is not a man First and foremost, he's a man, because Exodus 15 and 3 says, the Most High is a man of war. The Most High is his name. So it says, the Most High is not a man. He's not a woman, because all of y'all got, the Most High is a man and a woman. He could be whatever he want to be. He's not none of that. He's a man, straight up. The Most High is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Had he said, did he say something? And shall he not do it? That's your faith in the Most High. You hear what he's saying. We done went to the kingdom. You heard what he said. You believe it? Is it worth you working toward what did you need to do to get there? Or you already got it together? But think again, the Most High is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? You better hear what he's saying. For real, for real. This is serious. And the times we in are very, very serious. Because World War Three could be knocking Right on the door. Look at uh, St. John, the third chapter, and verse 27, what John the Baptist said. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. You know? A man can receive nothing unless the most high get the glory. All praise to the most high. If you don't, if you ain't saying it, you better learn to say it. The most high name is jealous. His name is jealous. And a lot of times people will dismiss him and think it's them doing whatever they're doing. Or whatever the blessing or whatever it is that brings them up. But it's the most high. And more and more and more, you need to understand this. Because without him, you can do nothing. People can look, you can run to um, whatever it is that you think working for you. And when the most I feel you done left him out of it, oh, fearful thing to fall into the hands of living power now. It's a very fearful thing to fall into the Most High's hand. Especially if he's angry, he looking at you to put yourself above him. Hmm. We in this together. But we got to know what to do. To please him or go to John the first chapter. You gonna be caught in the hands of the Most High. What you gonna do when He come for you? Hopefully, you know. John one and uh, we started the beginning, verse one. In the beginning, in the beginning, Genesis one and one was the Word, and the Word was with the Most High. And the word was Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Like y'all, if you read like it said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Come on, that makes sense. 
But people read that and be totally without understanding of what it's saying. But look, I don't want to, I mean, this is everything from the New Testament pretty much is quoted from the Old Testament. Most people don't believe in the New Testament. They don't know the New Testament. They can't tell them the precept. Where is he talking about? Then you'll see. Hebrews. Go to Hebrews, the first chapter. So you can see. Say he's God, right? Mashiach El as I said. Look what it says in Hebrews, the first chapter, verse 8. And I'm just showing you why it says God. We don't like that word because that's a European invention. That's dog spelled backwards. But power is better. Or identifying who it's talking about. As I did, and that guy was talking about a Mashiach El Shai. In the beginning, the word was with the Most High. And the word was a Mashiach El Shai, you see. So it says, and this is real, I'm just taking you here to show you why it says God. For those that have ears to hear and eyes to see. He was one and eight. But unto the son, who was a Mashiach of Shai, he said, the Most High said to him, Thy throne, what? O God, see? So he's called God right there. Thy throne, O God, that the Most High called him God. Which means power. We gods. We little G's. Thy throne, powers and authority, O God, talk about the Mashiach of Shai, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom, right? It says, Thou lovest, thou hast loved righteousness, which is keeping up the laws of the Most High. We read in Deuteronomy 6 25. And hateth iniquity, hateth those that sin and that are wicked. Therefore, God, even thy God. So that's two gods right there. So who is that talking about? The Most High got somebody over him? If thou can say, we say, therefore, God, even thy God. That's two gods right there. That's talking about the Most High. Is somebody's over the Most High? No. He's talking about his only begotten son, of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Therefore, God, therefore, power that's below the Most High, even thy power, even your power, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, above the angels. But, that could go into people's heads. They ain't really looking at this for what it is. But you got to see this. Because it's right here. And it's, I mean, like I say, there's no New Testament when they're quoting all these things. That's why you see I can go back to the Old Testament and see what they're quoting from. What are they quoting from? Where they get that from? They just made it up and said, you just read the New Testament and don't know that there is no New Testament whenever they saying basically everything they saying. Here it is right here in Psalms 45 and 6 and 7. That's what they're quoting from. Thy throne. I'll just use the word that's written here. O God. Is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Right rulership. Scepter means the rulership. Thou lovest righteousness, which is keeping under the most high's commandments, and hateth wickedness. That's iniquity. You want to know what iniquity is? Here it is right here. Wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, your God, once again, this is what they're quoting from, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, above the angels. You see? So, that's why I say you can understand through the scripture. Go back to St. John, the first chapter. Now that we have understanding of why it's saying what it's saying, because it's written, but you can understand it through the precepts. But if you don't, you can't precept it as I just did, then it might go right over your head. You might just read it and think it's talking about the Most High only. St. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Most High, and the Word was a Mashiach El Shai. That's the understanding. The same was in the beginning with the Most High. He was in the beginning with the Most High because the Most High created him first. That's why he called him his only begotten son. Because, I mean, if, if that's the case, 
y'all y'all name me this because I don't ask this question. Ain't nobody answered it yet. I'm looking because y'all be talking about the sons of the Most High came down and had sex with angels. Talking about they would, I mean, with the sons, <laughs> the sons of the Most High came down and had sex with as angels came down and had sex with the daughters of men. So answer this question. Hebrews one, the first chapter. And five. You know, y'all like to say, oh, I heard that before. I heard that scripture before. Okay, we'll answer it. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. At this, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a light. A son, excuse me. A son. Let me read it again. For unto which of the angels said he at any time? And it's a question that's asked, and I'm asking, I've been asking. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Which angel? Anybody answer the question yet? But y'all say that the sons of the Most High went into the daughters of women and created giants. Genesis 6 chapter. Most I just say that. Answer that question. Verse 6. And again, he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of the Most High worship him. That's the most y'all was shot. The first begotten, right? That's why you see John 3 16. Y'all all know that. For the most I so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right? So, I don't even like to go here, but we're going to go here. Because this, y'all say the Bible been tampered with? This is tampering right here. And I'm going here because some people, you know, they might look at this one lesson and see this and change. In Revelation 3.14. So we deal with the light. We gotta shine bright to get you out of this darkness. You see? It says, and unto the angel of the church of the little Dixie and right. These things said the that name. That you say in the end of your prayer. So you can I get one? Can I get what you're saying? Whatever you say, can I get one of this? Can I get that name? These things said the fam. The faithful. And true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. The beginning of the creation of the Most High. So that entity, that Egyptian God, is the beginning of the creation of the Most High. It's faithful and true. We talk about this light, John. Shining bright. So this is the beginning of the creation of the Most High. The one that y'all call on after you finish your prayers, because he shut my mouth down. I'm knowing this, and I'm going to say it. He shut my mouth down. I couldn't even say nothing. I was, whoa. But that was the first time that happened. It happened when it was sitting up the prayers to curse Israel or anybody else, whatever, at that matter, or the Israelites. Whole congregation shut down. Nobody said nothing. Miracles, yeah. From the most high. And his angels. You think it can't happen? Shoot, if Satan get in your mind and people say, Why did you do the heinous crime? The devil made me do it. They telling the truth. They telling the truth. But y'all say y'all gonna look for something else. Because you don't know what this Bible is talking about. But they telling the truth. Go back to John. First chapter. I was gonna say the most high. Created a mustache of a shy, and a mustache of a shy created everything else. Through the power of the Most High. John 1 and 3. It said, All things were made by Him. Hear that? All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So, He made the angels, He made all everything through the power of the Most High. Look, we talking about the light, right? Let's let it shine bright. Ephesians 3 and 9.
and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That's a secret. Which from the beginning of the world has been hid in the Most High. So from, the, from Genesis 1 and 1, that we went to John 1 and 1 in the beginning, right? What's the word? And the word was with the Most High. The word was, and Mashiach was shot. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, this secret, which from the beginning of the world, all the way to Genesis 1 and 1, and before, have been hid in the Most High, who created all things by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. But you can't see this if you're not spiritual enough to see that he was an angel. Above all his other angels, other angels that he said his fellows in uh, Hebrews 1 and 5. I mean, you can't see that spiritually. That's why I say spiritually darkness. Now you got to come out of that spiritual darkness into this marvelous light to understand what, it, what this is all about. Come on, I mean, once I said he created all things by Hamashiach, y'all was shy. Period. If you can receive it, if you can't, then you still gonna be in darkness. You gotta go over that spiritual darkness. Go over uh, being discouraged in darkness. Go over that lesson. Along with what I just, you know, presented to you. John 1. Verse 4. In him was life. In the Mashiach of Shai was life. Matter of fact, before you go there, go to, because uh, it says, um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with the Most High, and the word was Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, right? The same was in the beginning with him. The most high, right? So in the end, when he come back to judge and make war, let's see what he say. His name going to be. Then, uh, Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, pure righteous power, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's what they called. That's what that's what it was called for. Is this, is this that last name that you say? The last word that you say at the end of your prayers? When we read... In Revelation 3, 14. And the reason why I'm saying it, I'm, I, I don't say it because most I said, be circumspect. And don't let the names of other gods come out of that mouth. Say, but I, listen to what he says. Because look what it says. So we're dealing with this light. We got to let it shine bright in righteousness, according to the righteousness of the Most High's word. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans right? these things said that entity. That God is this God that you say.